Welcome, welcome, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, to the new black media. Today's broadcast is about scientists who are now combing the human DNA for gay genes, and it sparks a debate about the quest for genetic link to sexuality. Not everyone is on board. Neil Rish, or Rish was vacationing in Hawaii when he started getting phone calls from journalists and his peers in genetics about a paper about to be published in the prominent journal Science. The paper, he was told, was finally going to put to rest the question of whether sexual orientation was determined by genetics. Quote, and I just thought, okay, here we go again, said Rish, director of the Institute for Human Genetics at UCSF. Quote, I've said this multiple times. Why are we so obsessed with, stud with studying homosexuality? Rich said. Why not genetics of religiosity? Or genetics of homophobia? Or racism? Why this? Rich joined many other scientists across the country in asking whether it is appropriate to keep spending time and money pursuing a genetic explanation for sexual orientation when other human behaviors, never mind hundreds of heritable diseases, remain underexplored. Well, before I continue family, here at the New Black Media you know I like to make it clear, crystal clear, like a crystal ball. And here I'm going to tell you that this exploration into the human DNA of the gay gene is more to do with population control. We should know this by now. Traditional, foundational black Americans should know that the war on our lives has always been about population control and how to control our DNA. So that's what this is about. Whether this scientist here, Neil Rich, wants to recognize that or not. But I digress. Geneticists have been hunting for a clue in human DNA that would help explain sexuality since the early 1990s when a scientist at the National Institutes of Health claimed to have found a, quote, gay gene that was passed from mothers to sons. His, in, his initial work has never been successfully replicated, but dozens of other studies have been done since then looking for other genetic ties. The new study, the largest ever done, involving genetic material from more than half a million subjects in the United Kingdom, the United States, and Sweden, doesn't shed a lot of light on the topic, though it confirms that genetics certainly play a role in sexual orientation. The study, published Thursday, was led by scientists at the Broad Institute at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Harvard. The study identified five genetic variations that were closely tied to same-sex sexual orientation but those five variations explain less than 1% of all same-sex sexual behavior, meaning many more genetic factors are at work, and it would be impossible to predict whether any given person is gay or straight based on those variants alone. Overall, the researchers found that genetics could account for up to 25% of same-sex sexual orientation. Many scientists critical of the work said that's old news. Quote, we already knew there was a large heritable component to sexual orientation. We knew that it was a complex thing, said Stephen Riley, a geneticist at the Broad Institute who was not directly involved with the research. Quote, so our understanding has not really evolved. 
The paper sparked immediate debate when it was published, indeed. It was already controversial before it was released among scientists such as Riley, who were familiar with the work. It wasn't the results, necessarily, that anyone had a problem with. It was that the science was being done in the first place, and that it was promoted in such a well-known and highly regarded journal. No matter the intentions of the scientists leading the research, the work threatens to pathologize homosexuality, studying it as though it were a health problem to be solved, Rich said. Well, before it used to be categorized as an health issue, but our society changed all that. But I digress. In Genesis, the world is your oyster in terms of what you might want to study to potentially help people. When all those possibilities exist, why would you study sexual orientation, Riley said. It's especially unsettling when sexual orientation is already a stigmatized, highly political issue, and it's easy for even the most benign results to be misinterpreted, Riley said. Already, he's seen evidence on social media of people using the Broad Institute findings to support the long disproved concept that sexual orientation is a choice because it isn't defined by one single gay gene. It seems like this research had a very low threshold of reward but a very high threshold of risk, Riley said. Already made aware of concerns around the research, Broad Administrators made the unusual decision last week to publish, in tandem with the science publication, several essays from scientists questioning why the study was done. Many raised ethical issues. Quote, curiosity alone seems insufficient justification to probe the genetic basis of a human behavioral trait and, by extension, an identity that demarcates demar demarcates a vulnerable population, let alone to do so in a high-impact scientific journal," wrote Joseph Vitti, a postdoctoral researcher at Broad. The study authors addressed questions around their motivations, both in one-on-one -on -one conversations with their peers and publicly. I'm going to skip down and just say that Rich said that, to no, Quote, I'm a total believer in pure knowledge, Breedlove said about the controversy surrounding the new science paper. Quote, I would be absolutely in favor of finding out which genes influence sexual behavior, just to know more about ourselves. Most people really do identify as being straight or gay, so let's get, so this gets at the heart of identity. Who am I? That's always going to be of interest to us and that seems perfectly natural to me. Rich said that though he understands that reasoning, he questions whether people's desire to understand sexuality is really just about curiosity. For so long, the question of determining the cause of same sexual behavior was framed negatively. It was more of who's to blame. Here at the Black Media, thanks for listening. Peace out. Finally, this is what bothers me. People should not need this. Nobody should need this to feel good about themselves.